everybody. Thank you so much for voting for my session at Dynamics Con. We're going to spend the next 40 minutes or so talking about a system admin task. The Maker Portal versus Classic Solution Designer. Where is a super system admin supposed to make configuration changes these days? Hi, I'm Heidi Newhauser. I am a partner at Reenhanced, which is located outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I love CRM, the power platform, and this community. I am passionate about user adoption and configuration over customization. I love running. You can see a couple pictures here of my family. I love my kids and spending time outside with them. And I'm truly honored to have become a Microsoft MVP back in May. So enough about me, let's talk about our session. Here's our awesome agenda for today. We're gonna to talk about some configuration tasks that you are likely to need to do as a system administrator in Dynamics 365. And we'll talk about where to configure each. So we've got the power platform and we've also got the classic solution designer. Then we're gonna take a deeper dive on some of the hybrid tasks which require both power apps and your classic solution designer. And those are gonna be model driven apps relationships, and UI controls. So if you aren't already aware, Microsoft will often change things. And sometimes those things are released in waves, not all at once, which leaves us, the system administrators of these systems, in a hybrid work experience, which can be a little difficult sometimes. So as a system administrator, where are you supposed to make your changes? Here in Power Apps or here in the Classic Solution Designer? Well, the answer is, it depends on what you need to do. And it changes often. So with no further ado, let's take a look at some system admin tasks and where you can do them today. But as I put here, it's important to remember, more capabilities are added to Power Apps and the Maker Portal often, almost on a weekly basis. So the information I'm giving you today is accurate as of August 18th, 2021. So system admin configuration tasks. We're gonna look at a lot here. We're gonna talk about where you can make your changes from a functionality perspective, and also where you should make your changes. So here's the big slide. This is our big summary. Let's go through this and we're gonna do a deeper dive on some of these tasks. Form design. Form design can be done either in the Maker Portal or in your Classic Solution Designer. If you haven't used the Maker Portal yet, you're gonna love the form design editor in there. Check it out and it might convert you to using Power Apps over your classic solution designer. Second is your system views. Again, this is something you can do in either location, but it is so far superior in system views. In fact, it's so good that I wanna show you what it looks like if you haven't seen it yet. So I've brought up a view in Power Apps in my Maker Portal I've already put my table or my entity into my solution file. And just for the purposes of a live demo, I've kind of brought it up here. So this is my view. And I want to show you a couple of tasks which are going to rock your world if you're still using Classic Solution Designer. And I know rock your world is a big promise, but look how easy this is. Here's my columns. And in the Classic Solution Designer, we'd have to pick between predetermined pixels, right? So 50 pixel, 150 pixel, you'd have to save and then you'd have to go view it. Well, here I can just kind of click and drag things around where I want them to be. And I can see my data live in here. So I don't have to guess, well, how big should topic be? Should that be 50 pixels? Should it be 200 pixels? Well, now it can be whatever the heck I want. And I can see exactly what it looks like with my live information here. The other really cool thing you can do from here is directly in this interface, I can click and drag any of these columns and drop it onto my view. It is super simple. And you can see everything here with your view is done in one canvas. Doesn't that rock your world? I love this stuff. So you can update your name, your description, your sorting, your filter, all in one place. So as a system admin, you're really decreasing the amount of clicks you need to do and streamlining your user experience, which is really cool. New fields. New fields can be added in either interface. There are a few field types that are unique to the Maker Portal, which we'll talk about in a bit, which make that a really cool user experience. You can also do that in your Classic Solution Designer. So real quick, I'll show you how you can do that. Here's your fields or your, col your columns. So I can click New Table Column. 
And everything in the Maker Portal and Power Apps is gonna open up on the right-hand panel here. You're simply gonna select a name, select your data type. You can see they're grouped by field type, which is really helpful too. So your text fields, any number fields, your date and time, and then some additional fields. And then you simply add your tooltip and save it, which is really cool. So another easy way to do that if you're still using Classic. Adding fields to Global Option Set can be done in either interface. Now the next one is where we start to see a little differentials here. If you need to change the order in your choices or your option sets, you're gonna have to toggle over to the Classic Solution Designer. Today, that's not available in the Maker Portal. If you need to add a new model-driven app, you can do that in either instance, in either your Maker Portal or your Classic Solution Designer. But as I noted here on the grid, it's a limited experience in the Maker Portal. More on this later. Edit existing model-driven apps. Well, the new designer is in preview mode, and in this preview mode, it's not available to edit any of your existing apps. So that will require Classic Solution Designer. Business rules can be done in either place. Custom controls. Again, we have Maker Portal is available, but limited, and Classic Solution Designer. Charts. Today, you can't make system charts in the Maker Portal. You'll have to toggle over to Classic Solution Designer. Email templates and security roles can be done in either location. Edit relationships, either one, but your Maker Portal is a little bit limited. Field level mapping, one of my favorite configuration tools, something that really helps with user adoption and data integrity, is currently only available in your Classic Solutions Designer, which is a bit of a bummer, but we'll talk more about that. Field security is something you also have to use Classic Solution Designer for. Auto numbering out of the box. One of the field types you can select from in Power Apps is auto number. It's so easy to configure. Classic Solution Designer, I gave that a red X up here, um, but you can implement it using the XRM toolbox or some JavaScript, but it's so much easier to implement in the Maker Portal. And finally, dashboards. Dashboards can be done in either location. So now that we talked about where you can do it, where should you do it? So here's where I think you should do your system admin configuration tasks. And you can see I've highlighted three, and that's because we're going to do a deep dive on these three for the next several minutes here. So a lot of these you should do in the maker portal, but some you still need to use that classic solution designer. So here's our hybrid system administrator world. Depending on the task, you'll have to use one or the other, and sometimes both. Speaking of both at these three, model-driven apps, relationships, and custom controls. In order to fully implement any of these, you're going to need to use both the Maker Portal and the Classic Solution Designer. So let's dive in and let's start with model-driven apps. There was a new Maker Portal for model-driven apps that launched in June, 2021. It's amazing, it's a thing of beauty. I was so excited to log in and start using this. The user interface for you as a system administrator is beautiful, it's flawless. There's a brief screenshot here, and I'm going to walk you through the whole process in a few minutes. But it's like the angels just shine down upon Power Apps and provided us with a beautiful interface. However, there's some limitations, of course, because right now we're in a hybrid configuration world. So let's point out the limitations of model-driven apps in the Maker Portal today, because some of these might be a problem for you, depending on how you're gonna design your app for your user group. Today, you are unable to add more than one area to the app's navigation. You cannot specify the app's URL. You cannot change the app's icon, which I like to do. And there are three components that are not available today, which are charts, URLs, and business process flows. So if your app requires you to do any of these above tasks, you're going to have to switch to classic, which is fine. So here are some configuration tasks in model-driven apps and the winning experience. So let's talk about these and then we're going to demo. Add a table or an entity to your app. So much easier in the maker portal. Select specific forms and views for your app. Again, I give the Maker Portal the big win on this, and I'll show you this in our demo. It's really simple to do. And just like we saw when we were looking at system views in the Maker Portal, it's all in one canvas instead of all those little boxes we used to use. Moving a table to a different part of your app. This is a thing you'll need to do in the classic. Previewing your app, Maker Portal, hands down. 
adding business process flows, adding URLs and adding charts like we talked about on the last slide for that unique classic, creating a new app from scratch, so much easier in the maker portal. And finally, updating an existing app. That one's gonna go to classic. So no further ado, let's do a bit of a demo on our model driven apps. So again, here we are in Power Apps. So make.powerapps.com. Select your appropriate environment at the top, of course. So this is my trial. You would use your sandbox. And here's all of my tables that are currently in here. You can see I have some existing model driven apps. And the first thing I wanna show you is that as soon as I click this, it's going to load the classic experience. So here's our classic app designer. And this is the old way. This is the way that you're probably comfortable working today. So again, if I go into an existing model-driven app, this is what I am going to see. So when I come back to my solution file, I'm going to click the new button. We're gonna select app. And then you can see I can select from a Canvas app, a model-driven app, and a page. So for this, we're gonna click model-driven app. And this is the new experience. And I really like how you can toggle right back to classic app designer, which will take you into that interface we just looked at. But for this, we're gonna select modern app designer. You see it's preview. So I think that's why its functionality is a little limited and it's hybrid right now. So we're gonna make a new model driven app. We'll call it Dynamics Con app. And I like to give everything a description. So when your users are viewing all of the apps they can select from, they know what this one does. This app is for Decomp Super System Admins. And then click Create. So you'll see it's a completely new navigation. Of course, Microsoft is changing the terminology. So all of those terms we're used to here in our classic app. So we've got components and artifacts and entity assets and a site map. Well, all of that's renamed in your new maker portal design experience. And everything here is run by pages. So if I click add page, I can select from a table-based view and form. That's your entity that we used in the classic. A dashboard and then custom. So we'll talk a little bit about custom, but the two things that you're gonna use as a system admin who's doing standard configuration work would be table-based view and form and your dashboard, we're just gonna do your system dashboard. So we'll select table-based view and form. And one of the things I love is that it continues the whole theme that we see across Power Apps where it gives you this search. So I don't have to scroll down like I do with the classic one. Tiny little things that just make a big difference in your time savings and making you more efficient. So I can just select all of these different tables or entities. And once I'm done, click add. And now you can see my app has account, activity, and contact. Now we have navigation here. Navigation is your site map. That's a simple change, right? Because your site map already did navigation, but it's called navigation. And if I want to change the name, you can see it defaulted to this super helpful group one. You're going to just click the ellipses to the right. Oh, sorry. You're going to click on group and then you're gonna update your title. So my work or whatever you'd like it to be. And then it'll change it immediately. So we can see you've got sub area one, accounts, activities. And from here, I can add groups and sub areas. Like we said before, you are unable to add more than one area in your app at this time. So as soon as I added these different areas, look, I have a preview right here, which is so neat. So I'm gonna go back to pages and I'm gonna expand account and we're gonna click on account form. This is exactly the same thing as coming to account on your classic and then selecting your forms here. But look how much easier this experience is. So it says no forms have been defaulted. Click manage forms and then you can come in here and you can start to add whichever forms you want, which is cool. And also if you forget which forms they are, you have the ability to preview it right here. So I've forgotten which forms there and have to go back to my classic, my solution designer to kind of dig in. We can also do the same thing in views. Click manage all views and then select only the views you want to appear. And then you can preview that in real time, which is really cool. So save, publish and play are the same at the top as what we were used to. 
Um, and the last big change is data. So data is previewing the data. So in your app and in your environment, you can kind of check out what those are. So again, your site map is different. You've got navigation here, you've got data and all of your pages here. We'll talk a little bit about more at the end of the session today about what changes are coming and what's coming next in model-driven apps, because there is a lot of change coming. But before we run out of time, Oh, I should note, if you have questions about model-driven apps that I didn't cover here, if you are curious about certain areas of the new design experience, please put them in the chat. I will be monitoring these as the session is ongoing, and I will be happy to answer your questions, either in the live Q&A at the end or during the chat in real time. So let's move on to relationships. As we all know, relationships can be complicated, and that is true in Dynamics 365 as well. So I put screenshots here of relationships. On the left is your classic solution designer. On the right is the maker portal. So right off the bat, you probably notice there are less fields in the maker portal, which is important because if you want to make some of the changes that those fields power, you will have to move to classic. So what are those? Here are your relationship configuration tasks that I could think of and where you do them. Add a new relationship, easy. You could do that in either experience. Change relationship behavior. If you want to change the type of behavior, which is your cascading, your delete behavior, your assign, your share, your unshare, or reparent, you can do that in either interface. Now, where it changes a little bit is if you need to change relationship behavior for your roll-up view or your merge, those have to be done in Classic Solution Designer. My favorite thing to do on a relationship, add mappings. Sadly, not available in the Maker Portal. So. If you want to map fields between entities or tables on a relationship, you'll need to use your classic solution designer. Change your lookup column display name can be done in either place. However, if you want to change that lookup field requirement, today that has to be done in your classic solution designer. So we're going to move on to a really fun one, user interface controls. User interface controls are applied at the entity or table level, the view level, or the field or column level. So we're going to start with our table and view level controls. There are three really cool ones you can apply. The Kanban control, editable grid, calendar version two. And I have the scope listed here so you know. Kanban is really cool. It's table only and it's only specific tables. We'll talk more about this in a minute. Editable grid is only at the table level. So with those table level controls, once you apply it there, every view under that table is going to have that control applied. Then we have calendar version two. This one can be done either at the view level or the table level. And you see, none of them can be applied at the maker portal. So switch to classic it is. How do you implement a control at the entity level? Well, it's pretty simple. From your classic solution designer, you're gonna open your entity. We're back to our legacy terms for these because classic solution designer calls them entities and not tables. You're going to click the controls tab, which you can see right here on the right hand side. You're going to select the control from the list, configure additional properties if needed. Then you're going to make sure you set your scope and then publish. It's pretty simple. We're going to walk through it real quickly. So again, this is one that we have to do on our classic solution designer. So here is my solution file in classic. I've clicked on activity. Here's my control tab. Let's zoom in a bit for you. Add control. And we'll pick calendar control. Click add. And then here's where you would configure additional properties. So I'm going to talk more about that later, but this is how you would apply an entity level control. And you can scroll down and see all of the controls that are available. So there's your editable grid and the Kanban. And I like it gives you a preview of what those look like too. Speaking of previews, let's talk a little bit about the Kanban control. This is available only on your opportunity and activity. And this is a screenshot right off of Microsoft documentation that talks about the control. It allows you to visualize your data a little differently. It's in the column. So this is my activities that it's been applied on. It shows you anything that's open, completed, canceled, or scheduled right from one place. Very cool. You know your new users well. You're gonna know if something like this resonates well with them. If it does, Give it a shot, apply it in sandbox, let them test drive it and see what they think. This is applied at that entity level, the table level. It's not supported on subgrids. So if you have a subgrid of an activity on an account, for example, 
the Kanban control won't show. It's only at that entity level. And then unfortunately, it's not supported on the Dynamics 365 for phone mobile app. Next one is editable grid. This is a really powerful grid, but there are some limitations. And I wanna make sure you understand this perfectly clear. So editable grid is applied at that table level, at the entity level. So this example is on contacts. And what's great is if you have a user group who maybe has a lot of data entry and they're constantly updating records, this can be a huge time saver because you don't have to go between each individual record, open it up, load the form, edit the data, save and close. You do it all in one spot. However, one of the biggest things that you should be aware of is that if you have any read-only fields, they become editable with this, which could be a problem because your read-only fields are read-only for a reason. So your quick fix is to call up your handy developer friend and ask them to put some JavaScript on the form to continue to make them read-only. Even though I stress configuration over customization whenever possible, there is always a place for custom code. And for editable grid, this is it. There are also limitations on certain field types. For example, any concatenated fields like full name, which you can see on the leftmost column here, which is locked, is not able to be edited. The workaround there would be on the views, you would put first name, last name as separate columns, and then you'll be able to edit them. So super powerful control. If anyone's using any of these controls, I would love to hear from you in the chat. Let me know what you're using and what your users think about it. Let me know if you have any fun stories about how these entity and view level controls have transformed your users. And that would be really cool to know. So next we're gonna talk about cal calendar control version two, my personal favorite. We have it implemented in our internal Dynamics 365 system. And we have implemented it for nearly every customer because it is just so darn awesome. So very cool control, super helpful in user adoption. Instead of displaying data in a grid, it's displayed on a calendar. This version two was reimagined from version one. It looks and feels more like Outlook. So if you're already using Outlook, your users are gonna love this. It's like I said, an excellent tool to aid in user adoption. And this one can be implemented at the entity or the view level. So let's demo this. We kind of already started it here. Actually, this was the entity level. Let's go to views. We'll do this a little differently. So I'm gonna show you how to do this at the view level, which is very similar. I've already added open activities to my solution file on the activity table. And I'm simply going to open that up here. And I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it. So again, must be applied at classic solution designer level. This is our, our old faithful friend here, and we're gonna come in this common tasks box. And from here, you're gonna click custom controls, add control, and here it is, calendar control version two. Shows me a preview of what it's gonna look like. This one has some additional configuration needed. Make sure you don't forget to change your scope. So we're gonna make this on the web, the phone and the tablet. You can have it just on one or two of these and have the read only on others. It's completely up to you, you know your users. At the bottom, you see all these required fields with red asterisks. So I need to map this. And this is simply asking me, what, when do I put an activity on my calendar? How do I map the start date? And all of your date fields are going to show up as options here. It's gonna ask you what value of the field do you want this to be? And since I'm adding this to open activities, I certainly don't wanna use actual because they, they're open, they haven't happened yet. So I'm gonna use scheduled start, click okay. And my end date, we're gonna do the scheduled end date. Again, actual won't work for this one because I'm adding this to open. Description, this is the single line of text that's gonna show up for your users on their calendar. If you're adding this to the activity entity, I recommend using subject, but you can do whatever you want. Any text field is gonna pop up. Once you're done, make sure you change your control here. Click okay, and then save and close. And then from there, like all changes in Classic Solution Designer, all you have to do is publish it here. And then you're gonna have a really slick interface. It's gonna be a nice calendar instead of your grid. So now if we toggle over here and show you the user experience, this is what it looks like when you've applied this calendar grid 
to a view on activities, which is pretty nice. So this is our subject. You can hover over and see the full amount. And then your users can come in here and manage all of their activities using this view. Now, just a side note, you probably have a stick in the mud on your sales team or your service team or in your user group who won't like this. Most people will love it. If they don't like this, they can use the old view. So all you have to do for that is click on your ellipses here and show as read-only grid and it'll toggle it back. Now this is just session related. So if your user likes this, they'd have to change this every time, but it is an option to toggle back and forth if you want. It's just going to default everybody down to the calendar control. So that's your calendar control at the view level. If you apply this at the entity level, it would trickle down to all of your views. But since we only put it on one view, you can see we still have our standard grid here as well. Now we're gonna talk about field controls. I love field controls. I am a big fan of visualizing data for your users anytime you can. It breaks it up, it reaches different learning styles. Some people interact with data differently than others. Not everybody likes to just read text everywhere. So here's five field controls that you can configure today and where you can do them. So let's go through each of these. We have the toggle control. The toggle control is a phenomenal control you can apply to any two option, any yes, no field in your system. And this is a wonderful one to put on any forms if your users are mobile. So, I mean, it's so easy. Just tap that little yes, no, whatever your two options are, and then they're able to continue going on their way with their data updates. Maker portal, yes, you can do this in the maker portal. However, I put a note here because this always bothers me and I feel like I'm doing something wrong, but I'm not. When you implement this specific control on a form in the maker portal, as well as the others you can do in the maker portal, your display label isn't gonna show up. It's gonna be blank and you're gonna think you did something wrong. But I promise you, you're not. It's just, it's some funky little thing that's happening in the maker portal now. When you apply a column control on, on a column, on a field, on a form, your label won't display. Fear not, you've done nothing wrong. That's just how it is. If you publish your changes and then you go check it out from the front end, from the user perspective, it will be there. I'm sure that bug will be worked out eventually. Um, you can also implement this one on Classic Solution Designer. So it's available in both. Next, we have star rating. This one seems to resonate really well with sales reps, um, specifically on something like a rating field. It's a whole number field only, only one through five. There's no other options for this one. And like the toggle control, it's something you could just tap on a mobile device for any of your users who might be mobile friendly. So that's a really cool one that you can implement for whole number fields on any form. Again, that label is not gonna display in the maker portal, but it is there. Then we have a really cool one, autocomplete. I like autocomplete. There's some additional configuration that you have to do like we did on that calendar control that we applied at the view level. Uh, when you're using autocomplete, this one has to, it's a single line of text that's gonna look up to something else. So in the example that I have here, it's kind of small, I hope you can see it. Um, we have a spouse field and it's a single line of text field, but I have it looking up to the contact table. So if I start typing, like if I put the letter H, all contacts with the letter H are gonna show up as I'm typing. So it's a really cool field that you can implement. Today, it's not available on the maker portal. So you'll have to toggle over to your classic solution designer in order to implement that one. Input mask, this is another really cool one. In the example here, the highlighted field business phone has the input mask control applied while the mobile phone does not. So why would you use input mask? to streamline your data, to streamline the formatting, to make sure that users are kind of forced into a specific format. So you would configure what the format's going to be, and then any data they put in there is gonna show up that way, which is pretty neat. Single line of text only, and this is not available in the maker portal. Now, in the example that I gave you here, I think this is a really good use case to put it in a phone number 
but it doesn't come without its issues. So when you apply the input mask, you're gonna change the out of the box functionality on phone number. You probably noticed in a model driven app, a user can click to dial right from Dynamics 365, which is cool. If you're using that functionality today, do not apply input mask because it takes away that click to call option. It becomes simply free text. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you apply input mask, it will take away any of that out of the box stuff that might be happening specifically on phone numbers. If you're not using that click to dial, then it doesn't matter. And this could be a really cool way to make sure that your users format your data the same. Finally, we have number input, which is for any number field. You could do whole number, currency, decimal point, and floating point. You select the increments if it's by one, by 10, by 50, by 100, but you would simply have this control. Instead of typing in a number, your users would do the plus minus here. So that's a pretty cool, pretty cool field control that you can implement that's gonna help your users as well. This one can be done in either Maker Portal or Classic Solution Designer. So let me come over here and we're gonna come back to Power Apps and we'll go to Lead. And what I wanna do is show you how you're gonna implement this at the form level in Power Apps. So if I wanna do this in Power Apps, again, I'm limited to those toggle fields, the star rating or the number input. The other ones have to be done in your Classic Solution Designer. So let's go to forms and I'm gonna open up my lead form. These controls are only on one specific form. So by applying it here, it's only going to change my field display on this specific form. If I have different forms, it won't be done there unless you make that change. Um, so here is a couple options where I've already applied this control and you can see that all three of these controls Oh, sorry, that was a bad example of scrolling in. Here we go. <laughs> so there's no label here, but you can see my labels are, are which one? A whole number field and star rating. So let's show you how you apply it here. You would select your field, go to components. Let me remove this and I'll show you how to add it from nothing. So here's your rating, add component. And it shows me what my options are. So on this field type, I have the option for number input and star rating or a Canvas app. And I really like that when you hover over these, it shows you a preview of what that might look like. So we'll do star rating, tells me the value, two, three, four, or five. Show component on. So this is a little different than your classic solution designer. It defaults you to turning it on for all of these scope options which is the exact opposite in classic. So if you don't want it to show on any of these, uncheck those boxes, click done. And as you see that label disappears, but now your control is here. Um, if you pre publish your changes and preview it, it's all gonna be there the way you want. So let's come back over here in classic and I will briefly show you how you will do this on the classic solution designer before we run completely out of time today. So I'm gonna open up my form, again, at Classic. And I, I know as a system administrator, it's a little difficult learning both ways to do this and having to do this in parallel often. Um, but that's just the way it is for us system admins right now. This is why we are CRM unicorns because we can do all of these things and we understand it all. All right, so let's come to that same field, which is rating. For this, you're gonna double click on the field name or click the change properties icon up in the ribbon. Click controls, add control. And you'll see a lot more here because there are, there are more options available for you in the classic solution designer right now. We'll find star rating, click add. And then if you want, you can change your value and the max. And like I said, um, in here in your classic solution designer, you default to none. So exact opposite of the maker portal, you would change your scope, click okay. And then from here you would save and publish. You can see unlike Power Apps, you don't get a preview of this until you click that preview button and kind of do it there. So I know we're moving quickly through all this. It's just cause there's so much content and I'm trying to empower you with different tools and things that you can use 
to manage all of your system admin tasks in this hybrid world. Again, if you have questions on any of these controls, put them in the chat. I'm happy to talk more about any of these. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about some future known updates. Like I mentioned in the very beginning of our session, Power Apps functionality and capability changes on a very regular basis. So there's a big update, the 2021 release wave two update. And there's a lot of changes coming in Power Apps. And I just wanna point out a few. I have a link here to the full model driven app release notes in all of its glory. I think it's like hundreds of pages long if you look at the PDF. Um, but let's point out some of the things that are gonna change your life or your user's life. The first on the left is actually from release wave one. It hasn't gone general availability yet, but it will soon and it's really cool. In-app notifications. I don't know about you, but I've had users ask for this for a while. So see this pop up, letting this user know an account has been updated, listing the account and then having a link. How cool is that? If your sales rep is managing an account, somebody in service made an update, they now get a little pop-up box to let them know. That's a big deal for users. Let's go on the right-hand side. This is something that's in release wave two. These are rolling out through the end of the year. So some of these won't happen till December, maybe even later, but they're on the roadmap. New column options. This one is so cool. Users can customize columns on a grid. We're talking about a system view, not a personal view. Your users have the ability to add, remove, or change your column order. They click this button that's circled, and then they're presented with this, edit columns. These screenshots are right out of release wave notes, and they're really exciting. More updates coming. There's a lot coming for model-driven apps, a lot. So the things we saw today on our brief tour and our brief demo of the new Power Apps Designer is just the edge. The biggest change coming is that you'll be able to have Canvas apps as pages. I know Canvas apps might be more developer focused or super technically minded system admins and it might not be something that you're managing, but if someone else in your organization builds a really cool Canvas app, you can insert that in your model driven app just by adding a new page. It's gonna be amazing. It really extends what you can do within your model driven app way beyond the confines of CRM itself, which is pretty neat. Offline use in model-driven apps, yay. If some of your employees, if some of your users, maybe field sales is working in an area that doesn't have good connectivity and they can't access their model-driven app, well now you'll have offline use, which is awesome. Modern global search. They're gonna change your global search a little bit. Check out the release notes if you wanna see I know people don't like change. They're gonna move your global search bar to the center of your screen. I know it's on the right right now, but it's going to be in the center and it's going to use relevant search, no more categorized search. So that's a change that's coming and you should be aware of that and proceed accordingly. Finally, power FX for app makers. I can't find any details about when this is rolling out. I'm excited about power FX. That's like the Excel language of making things work. I am not a terribly technically minded individual. I can't build a Canvas app without looking up what functions I need to use and how to write my formulas. But PowerFX is gonna change that because I'm really good at Excel and I can start to use that Excel type language, which is PowerFX, to build my apps, which is super cool. Hang in there, we're almost done. Additional resources, I know we covered a lot of information here and I don't wanna leave you high and dry without anything. So my first resource is my website, crmheidi.com. I blog on this stuff all the time. Um, so I would love you to check it out and hopefully there's some tips and tricks on there that'll help you. I have a link to this YouTube video about the new Power Apps Designer. It's a four minute video I made that goes more in depth than what we did today. So you're welcome to check it out if that's helpful. The Microsoft Learn Learning Path on how to create a model-driven app in Power Apps. If you're new to this, check that out. It's really helpful. I really like the Microsoft Learn resources available to you. And finally, Microsoft Power Apps documentation. So there's a ton of stuff here. You should have links to all of this. You have the avail availability to download these slides after the conference and you can get all this. I'm also gonna put these links into the chat so you have them now. 
Um, again, any questions that you guys have, I hope you've been using the chat. If you haven't, we're gonna transition now to a live Q&A. So I'm happy to answer the questions you have right now or questions that have been asked throughout the session. Thank you again. I've really enjoyed talking to you guys and I will see you live in just a moment. Buddy, thanks so much. It's awesome Hello. to see everybody here. I love all the questions. Yeah, I'm here to help. I'm going to ask the questions for us. So Heidi, get ready. We can get started. Fire away. Lots of questions and not a lot of time. See sure. what we can get through. Yeah, so the very first question we have is, uh, what does moving a table to a different part of your app refer to? I think we narrow that down. I mean, in the classic solution design, well, the classic model app designer, you can literally click on an area and drag it. Um, and you can't do that in the new maker portal experience, sadly. Awesome, cool. It looks like uh, Kirsten did get that um, a little bit clearer for her. The second question is from Chad Althouse, and it is any suggestions on what tables to include in data that are not navigation? Oh yeah, I think I asked some clarification questions around that, oh, sorry. And hi Chad, great to see you here. Um, but the data area of the model-driven apps is just looking up tables. So if, if you click on data, it's gonna show you the tables that are in you, included in your model-driven app, and then also show the ones that are in your environment versus just the app. So I wasn't quite sure what you needed to do beyond that, but that's all I've used the data area for so far. That's great. We have another question, and this one's from Andrew Yoder, and he asks, where's a good place to find and learn about new controls? I saw that question, and that's a great question, and I went and grabbed some links while we were waiting. So I'm gonna post these over in the chat for you. Um, the ones that I talked about are available in Microsoft documentation, which I know is always a super thrilling read. So hopefully you'll be able to see that in the chat. And I also sent you the, the crowdsource type. So it's the PCF gallery. So these are people who are building controls on their own and sharing them with the community. So those are not the ones that I went over, but it's a good resource if you're looking for another control beyond the ones that I showed you today. That's great. Thanks, lady. All right, so we have two more questions here. These are both from Allison uh, Bryden. And uh, the first one is that it would be nice if Editable Grid was available to activate on a per user basis. So I'll let you speak about that. Yeah, you can't, I'm sorry. I feel like I always answer Allison's questions, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I well, can't. Editable Grid one. are global. And while I realize there are a super powerful tool and they'll resonate with certain user groups that you might have, they, they don't come without their warnings. I think somebody was adding that in the chat. So they add a lot of functionality, but they also add a lot of responsibility on you to administer and make sure that everything works the way it should. That was very great. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, the next one from Allison is read-only fields, as in uh, set read-only on the form or actual read-only as defined in the database, like calculated fields. Yes, sorry, the sun just came out. I'm like dying here. Um, I, that one we addressed as well in the chat. And I think that was specific on what I was talking about at that time. And that was read-only fields on the form or the view, not the database. Okay, a uh, couple more questions. What version of uh, CRM added calendar control? It looks like you answered that one. Um, another one was, Will the calendar view work on a subgrid or dashboard? Yeah, that was an interesting question. I've honestly never tried to add it to a subgrid. I would guess it wouldn't work on a subgrid. I don't know what that display would be and how user friendly, but I will tell you, I'm gonna go into my demo environment and try it and see if I can. But you can add it to a dashboard. So it will. it is compatible with that. Okay. Awesome. Uh, another question came in from Chad. We got a lot of questions today. Um, this question is, any thoughts on why you'd use the autocomplete instead of a lookup? Yeah, that was a really good question. So autocomplete, um, like I had in my slides, is a free text field. So that is obviously very different from a lookup, which is looking up to a specific record type in a table, which has a unique GUID, uh, which is super different than a free text field. And I think depending on what your use case is, 
you'll be able to tell if a free text field fits better versus an actual lookup. You also can't apply controls to a lookup. I don't know if that's reason enough to not use it, but I think it depends on what you're gonna use that field for and which would be a better fit. It sounds like there's some relationship stuff that you might wanna think about in terms of data structure too. There always is. <laughs> uh, the next question is the big one, and that is what is the difference between model-driven app and Canvas app? And I know yeah, you're excited to answer this one. Well, and I think having Nick as my moderator is perfect because I create model-driven apps. I'm passionate about configuration over customization, of which model-driven apps is a perfect tool for us, especially as makers and builders and unicorn CRM system administrators, where Canvas apps are, I think, more of the developer mindset. Um, but the way you can really think about it is, are you starting database first? Are you using Dataverse? Are you gonna build it out using tables that already exist? Or are you starting it design first? Are you gonna have someone like, like Nick on staff who's going to you know, write it from code, write it from scratch? Nick, I don't know if you wanna expand more on Canvas apps, but Canvas apps, you could do anything. You're limited just to your imagination almost. Um, Model-driven apps, you're starting with your Dataverse database and then building it off of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. I guess I can extend it is that the model driven app is, uh, like you said, really focused around the data where the, the Canvas app is more free form uh, and it allows more flexibility than you can in the model driven app. But if you're doing model driven app stuff and you're working around the data, just follow the model driven app way. Cool. It looks like we have three minutes left. Okay, we have another question that came in. Does the customized column on a view change system view or create a personal view for the user? Yes, I think that was on that that new item that's coming out with the, the release wave two. And I saw some conversation. I haven't played around with it yet, so I don't know, but it looked like someone might have answered you. Yeah, it looks like Ken says that the custom column is session only in the preview at least. I figured it would be that way, much like if you want to toggle back and forth between your calendar control and the read-only grid, that's only session-based. So that was my yeah. theory. Glad to know it's confirmed. Yeah, Chad Althouse also had some really good input on this. He said it won't save automatically. If you save, save as new view, it does save it as a personal view. That's awesome. That's gonna make users super happy. You know how finicky some users are. We, I'm one of them. I want my columns in a certain way and that might not be what my system view is. So I think that's a really cool way that they can quickly, simply save something they like and just come back and use it again. Teach them how to pin it to the top of their app and they'll love it. Uh, that's it for the questions. We're down to, it looks like two minutes left. So free form, uh, the stage's yours, Heidi. Cool. Should I dance to the Dynamics Con music again? I thought I was gonna get <laughs> caught dancing when we went live. I realize how much I talk with my hands now in this live session, sorry about yeah. that. If you guys wanna connect after this, I love talking about user adoption, configuration over customization, training, all kinds of that stuff. So you can find me on Twitter, I'm at crmheidi.com. You can email me, heidi at reenhance.com. All kinds of good stuff. If anyone else has any questions, we have like, we've like, a minute left if you have questions. I'm putting your Twitter handle into the uh, chat for everyone. Thank I don't you. have your LinkedIn handy. That's okay. You guys can find me. Heidi Newhouser. I think I'm the only one out there who does nerdy CRM stuff. Yeah, I put your email address oh, you in there for you. Well. Blog too, CRMHeidi.com. I keep throwing stuff out there. I'm doing a whole thing on system administrator stuff right now. So we have 10 part series. I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been really fun. I can't wait to tune into the rest of the sessions. There's good stuff the rest of the week and I hope to see you guys there. I'll also be in the CE watch party if you wanna keep chatting. Great, yeah, I'll join you there. See you they're guys gonna, in the watch party. They're gonna party. Us out now. All right. Bye everybody, thanks. Bye. You.